I can hear you groan, you know. What's happening, bonsai friends? In the workshop today, I've got this field elm, or Ulmus minor, that desperately, desperately needs some pruning. So the work today is going to involve cleaning the tree up, removing any weak or dead material, taking groups of three and four branches back to twos. Once the cleaning is complete, we'll then be able to have a look at the tree, see what's going on inside, and then make some more refined choices about the branches that we keep and the branches that we remove. And we'll also be able to pop a little bit of wire on. Shortly after getting the tree, it woke up in the spring, but showed signs of distress. And the signs that it was giving me pointed to root issues. So I decided to do an emergency repot and the root system was in a terrible state. I don't know what had happened, whether the extremely cold winter we had that year had affected it with its previous owner or what, I'm not sure. So I chose to put it into this big container and really just let the roots run. The signs that I'm looking for in order to carry out this work, aside from the tree being incredibly overgrown, the leaves have hardened off. The hardening of the leaf tells me that the tree is able to recover some of the energy that it's put into extending this growth. And when we prune and remove that material, we're not leaving the tree in a weakened state. If we prune much later, in mid to late August, for example, the tree will be quite likely to invest in another flush of growth, but the leaves won't have time to harden off and replenish that energy before leaf fall ahead of the winter. Okay, so it's the next day now. I've finished cleaning the obvious branches that aren't required. I've opened up a bit of space so we can see what's going on inside and it's absolutely pouring with rain outside. So let's dive in close. Let's look at that first branch. So the branch emerges, has some side shoots, and then it has a point where it divides into one, two, three, four. The first thing I'll do then is remove these side shoots. These four branches being in very close proximity, as they grow and thicken, they're gonna form a really ugly knuckle at that point. So, We'll take that down to two, and the two that I'm going to choose are going to be based on the most attractive angle and any movement that that division introduces. In this case, the branch swoops up and forms a fork of two here with a very nice crotch angle that will grow and form a beautiful branch. So I'm going to remove the other branches from that point. I'm just going to pinch out this bud just to prevent a third branch developing close to this junction and causing swelling in the future. Okay, so next up is this branch. As you can see, this one's a bit of a disaster. We've got this secondary growth going straight up. This one is kind of coming forward and we've got a really big ugly knuckle. A bit of a disaster this one. So what I'm going to do is I am going to place a bit of wire See if we can't position these slightly better and just let them grow, thicken, and hopefully as they grow and thicken, it might resolve some of this weirdness that we've got with the knuckle. Okay, so this is the next branch. Um, it swoops down. We've got an upward facing piece here. It divides into two along here. And we've got this backwards facing piece as well. In this case, I'm going to remove the piece that's closest to the shoulder of the branch to prevent it from creating a thick knuckle and also it's rising up and interfering with the branch above it. Okay so this side of the trunk progresses upwards from this branch below and we've got a new leader forming here and we've got this small piece growing in a backwards fashion from that area. I'm going to leave that one on 
I think that'll form a nice back branch in time. As we continue up from this piece, the trunk leader continues and we've got a slightly awkward division here. We did have two thicker branches that that subdivided and where my um, attempt at cutback went wrong we've kind of ended up with a really ugly division where essentially it's splitting into three in a really wide angle and the issue is this branch here is in a really nice position this one here is in a great position to form the next section of the trunk or the leader and this piece comes across and fills a bit of a space above the chop. But with the option of this small piece that could be trained upwards and of course we've got branches from this side that we could train across if we needed to fill some space. I think I'm going to remove this branch that's coming off at an awkward angle and the two potential trunks that we've got coming off here do form quite a nice attractive junction. Yeah, I'm going to remove this one. I'll just nibble this back. I've cut it off fairly roughly, but for now I'll leave it there and I'll come in and clean that up later. All I've done for the time being is make sure that I've stayed outside of the shoulder that exists. As we continue up this section, we have a group of several branches coming from this area. So let's have a look at those. This branch comes off at a bit of a weird angle, so we can go and remove that one straight away. This is the weaker of these two. It's not heading in a direction that's going to enhance the design, so that's another easy choice to make. I'm also going to remove this small piece. And this small piece can go. We have a branch coming off here. Then a bit further up we have a division into two again. So we've got two groups of two. Looking at the lower section of in this area, it breaks into two, which further subdivides into two. So I'm happy with that bit. Up above it continues and we've got a group of one, two, three. With this piece growing vertically and the crotch between this piece and this piece being a a lovely angle. I'm going to go ahead and remove this piece. Coming up from here, a division of one, two, three. So we need to make a choice in this area. Although the angle between this branch and this branch is reasonably wide and we could use this middle branch to create a nice narrow crotch between the two, I actually like the fact that this is moving more centrally so I'm going to opt to keep the stronger one and the one that's pointing centrally. Okay, so here we've got a group of three again. In this case, because we're fairly close to the branch underneath, I'm going to remove this one. What we have remaining are the main primary branches and any potential future trunk leaders that I wish to develop. So in relation to the base, the trunk leans this way and then we've got a slight lean towards the side there and with the lean and the movement I just don't think that a, a traditional broom form is going to suit this tree. So what I'm thinking of doing is growing another section of trunk to make a taller tree in terms of proportions. I think the thickness of this trunk can support visually a taller tree. So the trunk comes up like so uh, it reaches a point here and it subdivides into a couple of potentials. I think if we just follow the line through, this section here is going to be quite suitable to be the next section of trunk and we can train it in the appropriate direction to suit the design that we go for. Because these branches that I'm going to prune back are primary branches as opposed to final ramification, I'm not going to be cutting back to two buds. I'm going to cut them back to a length that's a bit shorter than the approximate size of the crown will be in the future. Let's go on.
gone hot out there and it's about time to on the internet one night during the week and I had a chance encounter with Harry Harrington he's just done some very similar work to one of his customers Alms and so I asked him a couple of questions about that and he, gave, he was good enough to give me some advice about how he goes about developing the branches on these um, so what he's done is he's defoliated, wired the branches and he'll then, with the growth that comes as a result of the defoliation, he will then develop some as ramification and some of it will be used as sacrifice branches to enhance the taper and the thickness of those primary and secondary branches that go on to be developed. So because it's an absolute faff trying to wire deciduous trees when they're in leaf, um, and also because that sounds like a sterling approach to take with the elms, I have completely copied him and I've done exactly the same. So I'm going to start at the bottom branch and I'll work my way up. So with this branch first, there's, we've got quite a lot of negative space in this area. So the first job I think is going to be to bring the branch so we pull the branch so that it's undulating in a position that's going to fill in this negative space quite nicely Okay, so as I position this branch, I've also tweaked the positioning of this one. This is going to fill this space out here nicely, and this one can function as a little bit more of a back branch. Okay, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So we've got a nice piece in here that we can use to plug some of that visual gap. I'll start by coming in. this piece okay Okay, that's looking good. So this area is a little bit more tricky. Okay, so if this is going to be the next section of the trunk or the leader, I actually want to manipulate it so that it comes over this direction and better balances the tree if it turns out that that's necessary based on the nibari. So let's very carefully this branch which can function as more of a back branch. Just give it a bit of a turn so you can see from more than one angle. So this central leader won't be as long as it is now or in the position that it's in. It's just going to grow and thicken. This piece will be pruned back at some point as well and at some stage in the future we're going to need to come in and have a look at the base and see visually 
what kind of design it's capable of supporting. It might be that we need to pull the crown back so that the lean doesn't make the tree look unbalanced. Or if the nabadi is really good and it's really gripping that soil and looks solid, then it might be that we can push the apex off to one side or even further back with the lean of that trunk. But we'll just have to cross that bridge when we come to it. For now, we'll get this tree back outside on the bench, continue to water and fertilise and do all those things that we do. But that concludes the work on this tree for today. So if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. Smash the like button for me, that really helps me out. Any questions or comments, drop them down below. Thanks for watching and take care.